if you picture the back and the sides as really the sides of a drum, what we're getting ready to do is, is glue the top on uh, after I carve the bracing on the top. But one of the things I wanted to explain is that, and this is something that I've just added recently, I now carve my tail block or my end block back to the thickness of my curved lining. And let me explain. So here's a raw end block and this gets glued and the, the rims get glued to this and the back and the top will get glued to this as well. On a lot of guitars, if you look at the top of it, down by where this end block is, you can see the shape of the end block telegraphing through the top of the, uh, of the guitar. Uh, so one, it looks a little bit unsightly. More importantly, and most importantly, is this becomes the drum head. This whole section in here is the area that is really active in a soundboard, and it's pumping up and down and rolling back and forth as you excite the strings. If you have this end block too wide, it takes away some of that excitability of the top. And so by carving this back to the same thickness, now you've just got one rim where essentially the, the skin of the drum, where the drum head is attached equally all the way around, and it allows all of the vibration to happen in here that needs to happen. So that's why after this is all put together, I carve this back with a chisel uh, from this shape back to the shape that it's in today.